Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Great Reset. Um. So that. Is it a version I, of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I. I. I from. You know how I feel about political outlooks and differences in political outlooks. I don't think it's a weakness. I think it's a strength. And I think America needs to get back to being able to have a conversation with people who don't agree. We learn so much from each other when we do that. You, I think, are going to hear and learn and question and disagree or perhaps really agree. Um... Like very few podcasts will uh, push you to, you're going to learn an awful lot. Between 1898 and 1933, there were 57 different socialist mayors elected in 23 states, from Nebraska to Florida to New Jersey. In 1911 alone, 74 different U.S. cities and towns elected socialists as mayor wanted a better world wouldn't you be willing to invest some of your money into that better world and if that money goes to making sure that no one has to do this in the future and that we we develop this better com these better communities in these places that have been fucked for decades you want you don't want that you don't want a, a better world for your children you want to, you don't want to save for what do you want to do die with all, all this money in the bank like it's crazy it's awesome. This money in the bank? Technological mind trick is basically using advanced technology on a person and or an environment to convince targets of illusion. Technological mind tricks are more abundant than many realize. I've been able to pick many of them are acted with quite a large amount of people. However, it is almost always misidentified as other sources. I have found advanced artificial intelligence is at some of the deepest parts of the rabbit hole. metabolically active. If we can simulate that by applying complex, meaningful magnetic fields to the brain, we can also induce those experiences. Like it's crazy. <laughs> but what are the limits? What else can people be made to believe? But well, one thing that's really clear, you can control the person's experiences and they don't know they're being controlled. That's why this technology is a potentially powerful one and has a two edge to its sword. And that was done without a plea from anybody. Nobody has ever been charged with a single murder. You, you can kill a million people a year and there's no blame attached to anybody. Look at this last attack. As I pointed out, uh, since 1885, we're trying to start a world war. At the end of the third world war, they would control the entire world. That world has changed forever and never be the same. And that was done without a peep from anybody. That was the point. How so? Well, I conducted an imaginary interview with uh, Jim Zid, but it looks like a standard thought operation because uh, I don't know why it changed the world. <laughs> it's controlled through unpayable debt. It's debt that can never be paid. The interest will never catch up with the debt itself. So, so is, a, that, is that what they did to the United States government? Is that how they're controlling it? Oh, yeah. So the United States government went and borrowed money for wars, and now it can never be paid back, so they're under the control of the... Well, Saudi Arabia apparently has been playing a double game all the way, because the Saudi princes, the Saudi princes have always banked their money in Switzerland, the pranks. So the so-called 
Saudi billions are apparently completely controlled in Switzerland by Jewish bankers. Both for those political reasons and for personal reasons. It happened that... Um, uh, central banking is just that, centralized banking. That's all central bank means, that it's centralized banking. And if it's centralized, uh, which is a very remarkable goal, <coughs> you change the world. <laughs> could come in from anywhere in the world and um, gain control of it. Uh, so they, they control through debt. Yeah, through debt. Well, control through debt means control through unpayable debt. It's debt that can never be paid. The interest will never catch up with the debt itself. In addition, one out of three people suffer from some form of malnutrition, which means they lack sufficient vitamins and minerals in their diet to lead that lead to health issues such as stunted growth in children. Uh, for 70 years, they, they killed an average of 1 million people a year, which is 70 million people. He explained why state terrorism was necessary. It's control through unpayable debt. It's debt that can never be paid. The interest will never catch up with the debt itself. Each year, poor nutrition kills 3.1 million children under the age of five. 25,000 people a day, or 9 million a year, die from starvation and malnutrition. This slaughter occurs every day. That's the equivalent of 10 9-11 events every day in the world. It shouldn't be that way, and I'm not sure how it started that way. And it's really unfortunate. There's got to be more emphasis on testing, and there's got to be more emphasis on showing people how to keep their immune system healthy, and then recognizing people that can't do that. President Joe Biden has launched his own fitness program aimed at American women. Instead of reducing childhood obesity, Biden's program focuses on American women between the ages of 18 and 45. Stating that America's lack of hot bods and beach babes has reached near crisis levels and imploring Americans to get more toned, tanned, taut, and tasty. Instead of respect for reason, open dialogue, freedom of speech, and individual and property rights. I want you to really think about that. And if you still say yes. To do this, you have to learn to speak the language. And I will prove these things to you in their own words. Thank you. In his own words, it's hair raising. I hope this makes you nervous. A brief rejoinder, and then we're going to return to the. Keeping us safe? No. They want a global governance. Now, I hope this makes you nervous. First of all, there's. As I will show you from the words of one of the most important guys in the next Biden administration or cabinet. Having seen the results of our work, that is, that we were supporting the traditional power structures in America. Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Um. So that is it a I, version of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I, I. I. From the Reich War of the Holy Roman Empire continues today. The Great Reset. This is the plan by the World Economic Forum to encourage governments to use all the levers they used during lockdown, enforced business closures, 23-hour lockdowns, restricting how far you can go from your home, and ridiculously aggressive policing tactics in order to tackle climate change. Here we see that Daniel's prophecy came true, as he predicted, so I, I started researching that a bit uh, only a few months ago um, because now we're hearing more about it. Um, I think it's something to do with, you know, our, our economy. The next term has been canceled. How did we get here? Because 100 years ago, we had capitalist powers wiring over, you know, World War I. We saw a, a lot that had merged fighting. That's basically why the war happened. World War II, obviously, the U.S. kind of took hold in the world with the dropping of nuclear bombs and instated its hegemony and now has these collaborators. But how did global capitalism come to this point from, from there 100 years ago to where it is today? As Daniel prophesied, the Western Roman kingdom is more greedier than the Byzantine Eastern uh, Empire. The bankers, the central banks of Europe, and the uh, they couldn't make. Uh, they couldn't have World War One. They'd been wanting World War One since 1885, 
but the central banks of Europe had already bankrupted every country in Europe. And it was impossible to have a war. So what is that plan? And this will ultimately lead to civil wars, unrest, destruction, environmental right, riots, that sort of thing. It doesn't matter how you dress this pig up, okay? It's still a pig. And this is going out to the global movement. Uh, and I thought that's perfect, right? You know, you go to the polling place, make your vote. Who's that? Is it world leaders? Is it religious leaders? Is it the academics? Is it the elite billionaires? Who is it that we are entrusting to fix the world? I don't mind fixing the world. I don't mind making the world a better place. The question is, who is leading this initiative? Who's making the decisions on how we're going to make the world a better place? Well, tonight I will lay it out for you. A Joe Biden administration will pursue a radical restructuring of the entire world. At last, they were ready to go, and at a given signal, they went. It's called the Great Reset. That's, that's what will determine what the next six, six, six years look like, I think. Uh Capitalism will morph into something that resembles less of a free market and more akin to, I mean, it's been played before, it's national socialism. Uh, and I think you're seeing that play out, um, different policies in new and different ways. Crony capitalism, it's best being uh, demonstrated today in China. It's Chinese capitalism. That really is leading to a lot of uncertainty. Our allies in Europe not knowing if they can rely on us as much, not knowing if we're going to have a stand in Asia where um, they could wind up with two female senators from a given state. I mean, it's just unprecedented in that regard. The one thing I think is interesting, though, is there are also a huge number of military veterans who are also running, um, people who have... Maybe, maybe not even immortal, but it's beyond what science says a human should be uh, capable of doing. We're reality generators. We, if we put our heads together, we can literally force the change that we want to see to happen without actually having a, a, a physical, linear cause, cause and effect reality to describe it. It would be like a miracle. And uh, that's what we got to do, basically. But I don't want to say any more than that, so I'll just let it go and see, uh, see what people... Um, but so that that was you know part of the genesis part of it are the right to a useful and remunerative job the right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing and recreation the right of every family to a decent home the right to adequate medical care and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health the right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age, sickness, accident, and unemployment. The right to a good education. All right, joke's over. I'm not a very good actor. This is FDR, and these are his proposed Second Economic Bill of Rights, recorded in 1944 after his State of the Union address. All of these rights spell security. And after this war is won, we must be prepared to move forward in the implementation of these rights. He died before the war ended. So what happened to these ideas? Political leadership and business leadership and military leadership interacted at just the moment of American post-war ascendancy, at just the moment when we were starting to have concerns that would lead a couple of years later to Dwight Eisenhower identifying the threat associated with the military-industrial complex. Say, that's the trouble with you Americans. You think you're running the world. I think they'll probably find ways to get there, but that doesn't mean that everything is fine. It doesn't mean that everything is now behind us. Um, that's the short term and the tactical. You know, I think if you talk to a lot of uh, Chinese uh, government officials, academics, uh, if you talk to people in the U.S., um, especially in some of the think tanks, you're seeing a hardening of positions. I Hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, your show is awesome. We're all time. Thank Hello. you. Hello. 
uh, is that we've been exposing the biggest corruption story in the history of the world. Sorry, raw time. Hi. I grew up uh, Jewish boy in New Jersey okay. hearing about the world Jewish conspiracy. Raw time. Hmm. Hi. Hi. Uh, not much. Just sitting here. Cool. Enjoy. I enjoy the videos. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, at least we had something good for Yeah. Time. Yeah. I'm very happy. Raw time. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. Look, you just hung up on me, and I'm I've sorry. been wanting to talk to you for like forever because we started watching your show like a month ago and it, you're fucking awesome thank you all right i just need to tell you that but uh get ready for extreme weather well get ready for it and i've been telling you for years okay why okay. and it's post-glacial rebound effect that ice is melting i'm getting a little carried away here watch out uh, raw time it really motivated people so off the charts almost double what it was uh it, you know i think the the interesting thing about Diego Rivera is that we don't have any say about it. And the impacts, the negative impacts that is happening environmentally and in, in, impacts in terms of increased wars and, and uh, regime changes, it's just, it's just incredible. It's, it's an awful manifestation. And the sooner we understand this and we can really relate to this and, and address it as the 99% and demand our democracy, um, that would empower us. And I think that social movements scare the hell out of them. This plan involves using the coronavirus and climate change as the disasters that force us into a great global reset. Uh, what do the socialists have to say about the fact that uh, approximations of their ideas seem to have resulted in so much destruction in the 20th century? And have so many failure nodes built in on the way to and, achieving whatever. Yeah, and uh, their answer is that, well, their ideals have been misappropriated in the 20th century. Well, I can, that may or may not be the case depending on what particular version of socialism one is putting forward, but the fact of the matter is that um, Karl Marx, for example, is not unrelated to what has happened in the 20th century. Hegel is not unrelated to what has happened. He's a major influence on the Nazis. And I must say that even though I would never, I, I'm not familiar with the writings of my opponents, but they haven't said anything to me to suggest that they personally endorse the bloodshed of the 20th century. But I will say this, the some of the principles that they share are shared by the, t the tyrants of the 20th century that have caused that bloodshed. They are statists. Socialism of any kind is a statist philosophy. And what has caused the bloodshed in the 20th century is different versions of statism. So rather than have to say, well, we're a different version of this creed, which has, in fact, caused so much destruction, at least we can sit here and say we reject the whole creed altogether. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. It is the uh, single most uh, vulgar misrepresentation of Marxism to say that it's determinist. The person who says that of it uh, convicts himself at once of not, never having opened a book by Marx or by Marxist. It's the most, it was, for its time and remains, the most determinedly and avowedly anti-determinist uh, mode of thought in philosophy. Uh, most uh, famously, and you'll see why I'm stressing this in a second, uh, Marx began his, his most uh, famous account of history and revolution, the 18th Brumaire of Louis-Napoleon, by saying men make history, but they do not make it under circumstances of their own choosing. They make it, but under circumstances directly transmitted and engaged from the past. The traditions of all the dead generations, he then famously added, weigh like a nightmare on the brain of the living. That's not determinism, self-evidently not determinism. Now, let me say why I think this bears on the question of violence. Men make history, but they can't choose when and how they're going to make it. If it was up to me, and I think I would carry John Judas with me here, the, the Russian Revolution would have happened in 1905, when there was a large democratic revolution led by socialists that was put down by the Tsar, um, and which, uh, in, with, with tremendous bloodshed and repression, and which paved the way for a ghastly imperialist war in which millions of Russians were killed under the leadership of the system of hereditary God-given monarchy, which was the system with which capitalism in Russia was at that time coexisting. Um, now, it is not, therefore, by the socialist choice that revolution took place in Russia at the close of that gigantic war and bloodletting and gigantic tearing apart of the fabric of Russian society to the point where cannibalism 
had re-emerged in the countryside. Um, an emergence in my submission that is not unrelated to the later course of events in the Soviet Union. It's quite simply unhistorical to say uh, that, well, revolutions devour their children. You, you then uh, surrender the need to analyze history, and you can simply look at history as the working out of that proposition. Very good means of economizing on thought, and one that I think should be uh, repudiated by any thoughtful objectivist. The 300 people who are vital to the central policy making, facilitating, and protection of global capital. The 32 of the G30 policy directors are deeply connected in the transnational institutions of central banks. 12 are from the US. One US citizen has dual citizenship with Israel. Three are French, three are French. Two are from the UK, both from the House of Lords. Two directors each from Germany and Mexico, including the former president of Mexico. Um, there's other thousands that are associated with that, but, but to identify who these players are, the idea that these policy groups and this concentrated capital is really managed by these small numbers of people. So we can identify who they are, and, and so we can lobby them, we can pressure them, we can protest to them. I mean, sit, people in m big metropolitan areas around the world, if they're starving, they're, they have no resources, there's a state trying to control them, ultimately they're, they're going to resist mm -hmm. in, in a variety of ways. And, and governments will, you know, people inside will realize there's a problem and resist. So we see resistance movements all over the world. And, um, you know, whether it's Bolivarian movements in South America or workers' movements in China, or what we had Occupy here, another Occupy type movement occurring, um, that, that all makes them afraid. Settlement, their members are all linked into IMF, the Bank of International Settlements, the World Bank, the Basel Committee, Financial Stability Board, the G7, G20, WTO, and the Federal Reserve here in the US. These are very powerful people. They all meet in one place privately, put out reports, and we have zero input into what they're planning and thinking. All 30 you should go out and vote. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you, you feel. Let vote now. Make sure you, in fact, let people know you're right. senators. I'm not going to answer the question. Why because... would they answer that? Or at least it is said that they could well take power from the from Christian, Christian Democrats, Christian. who are all divided and, and uh, as corrupt as they've ever been. That means that uh, the situation is so used as a tactic to, to negatively demonize people in the black liberation struggle. So, uh, and it was effective. So if uh, um, black leaders or organizations started to become too popular or too radical, they were, they were labeled as, as red or communist, and that brought the state down on them. It, it made it more difficult for them to organize even within their own communities because of the negative propaganda associated with communism. The state was involved in any number of physical uh, uh, um, um, attacks on black liberation leaders and organizations from shootouts with the Black Panther Party, straight out assassinations of leaders like Dr. King and Malcolm X, uh, both of whom uh, have had their, their high profile assassinations um, with strong documentation uh, uh, decidedly attached to uh, this state being involved, um, uh, directly or indirectly. Infiltration of the field of ufology experiencers, themes of controlled opposition and false light sources, and the transhumanization of society. Political imprisonment is still rampant. Uh, many of those who were involved in those struggles are still locked down in the dungeons of the United States to this day. For their involvement, the counterintelligence program, as it was famously called, was developed specifically to wipe out uh, all manner of the left and, and was targeted directly, specifically at acute societal engineering, thought surveillance numbers growing by the day, remote influencing technology used commonly on the population, that is, mind control, synthetic dreams, technological illusions, etc. Technology, rigged professional sports and rigged national elections in many ways, constant stream of psyops being perpetrated, the transhuman network, also the electronic telepathy network, transhumanism fueled application of dark eugenics, New Age religion, replacing old false paradigms with new false paradigms. War impact the repression on the left here at home. After World War II, you had 
Soviet Union got stronger, China had its revolution, Vietnam had a revolution, revolutions were happening all over the world against colonialism. So the US elites, bankers, politicians, and of course the repressive agency said, we're gonna stop that in its track in the United States, we're not gonna let it flower. Communism after World War II became synonymous with the struggle against the Soviet Union. Communism was treated no longer as an indigenous movement for social progress and social justice and equality, but a fifth column, an extension of an enemy state. And of course, the US and the Soviet Union had nuclear weapons pointed at each other. So if you were a communist, if you were sympathetic to the Soviet Union, sympathetic to socialism, then you were a traitor and you were treated as such. And that's what happened. Tens of thousands of people lost their jobs. Hundreds of thousands of people uh, were driven out of industry. People decided then and there, I won't sign a petition, I won't go to a demonstration, I won't have anything to do with the left, because if I do, I could ruin my chances for employment or education, and it could impact my entire family. That's what actually happened in the United States. The United States um, government has a lot of power, the US media, the corporate-owned media, has represented the view of the United States to the letter. And so the witch hunt that began in 1945, 46, 47, McCarthyism, became what I would say the unofficial religion of the United States. It, had, it was an article of faith. You had to swear that you renounced the devil, renounced communism, renounced socialism, so that you could work, so that you could have a career, so that you could uh, thrive in any possible way. It became a rule for existence in the United States. And so you had not only censorship, but self-censorship. Millions of people decided, I'm just not going to identify as a socialist or a communist, even if I think those thoughts, mm -hmm. because I can't survive within this system. That's, that's right. We're, we're, we're LARPing. The, the, the key problem, we're engaged in live action role play. One director, each from Poland, Canada, Spain, Argentina, Italy, Brazil, Switzerland, Japan, India, Singapore, and China. Highly educated group, 16 of the 32 hold PhDs. They have 30, 31 of them are men, and there's one woman, Gail Kelly, who's from the Australian Bankers Association. What we've got to do is we've got to get a bunch of old people out of their goddamn chairs. They're an embarrassment. They're completely failed. By the way, it's not the fact that they're old. Uh, Joe Biden entered the Senate in 1972 at the age of 29. It's enough already. If he had something to say, I'm pretty sure we would know about it by now. Um, <laughs> right now, the big issue is, is that Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell don't make sense, Nancy Pelosi, none of these people. We are talking about a world of technically incompetent people mm -hmm. who grew up uh, in an era, generally speaking, before the Great Society programs, um, born in the 1940s, who are not capable of living in a 21st century technological world with all this change. And we need different people in the leadership position. Number one, her value is number two. She is smart as the devil. Number three, she has a backbone like a ramrod. Number four, she is really principled. And number five, she is, uh, has had significant experience in the largest state in the union, running a just is only second in size to the United States Justice Department. And, uh, you know, obviously, I, I hope that never becomes a question. She's also worked at the International Monetary Fund. She's the only woman in that group. They're a very powerful group. I mean, when they put out a policy plan, it's perceived by the World Bank as a direction to what to do. I mean, the Holocaust, the Inquisition, the musical stylings of Barry Manilow, you, you know what I'm saying. I mean, there are things, there are things that we, we could have done better. Um, but, you know, if you look at Freemasons or you look at uh, Skull and Bones, you know, uh, you look at these various groups, they break down. You know, I mean, how can you have an academic secret society that George Bush is a member of? Right? I mean, you know, it's, you know, it says something about the, the academic nature in any event of the, the secret society. But, uh, you know, I think that the government's offensive with COINTELPRO was devastating. It targeted all socialist organizations and black liberation groups. It worked to put spies in every single black student union and every college. Tens of thousands had their homes ransacked by the FBI. Through this mass surveillance operation, the government used a wrecking ball of infiltration, sabotage, and even assassinations. 
the capitalists of the world declared the end of history, that capitalism had finally triumphed over socialism and would bury it forever. But it wasn't just here. The United States launched military interventions in over 17 countries in the name of fighting communism, deciding the destiny and causing untold misery for millions with the collapse of the Soviet Union. But if history has taught them anything, it's that even though they scorched the fields that grew socialist ideas, those seeds, though sometimes dormant, would sprout again.